Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I feel we need to talk about Ukraine. I feel Ukraine is an important country to think about now. Um, <clears throat> I think the things that happen in Ukraine now, uh, they um, will make a difference for many of the countries near them. And uh, it will make a difference in those countries. And when it makes a difference in those countries, then it makes a difference in the countries near them. And it's like the effect of a ripple when you throw some, uh, like a rock in the water and you see the effects come out in waves. I think I am very lucky to be in the position uh, that I am in now, which is very modest. I am an American girl living on minimum wage on the poverty line and everything I have it's beautiful and I thank God for what I have and I'm happy with that <clears throat> the United States is important because It has a lot of um, the United States. It has a um, it's very safe um, if for um, people to uh, make money in the United States and um, it's it helps people gain power by um, making money here in the United States because it's so safe it's there's a big safety for those people um, then it makes many people want to come over here and put their money here and because it's very safe um, and so um, we have advantages here of the United States um, uh, uh, because of that. Um, the United States knows um, in the government um, and the senators and the House of Representatives, all of the congressmen um, and the, these politicians, um, they talk in the last five years um, very much about how China has been uh, using economic warfare on the United States of America. And while we have big trade uh, agreements with China, and we get so much of the things from our grocery shelves from China, uh, uh, everything, all kinds of things, not only food, but... Um, many products because China it's has very many people they say they say they have very 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 many people and this helps them um, become very uh, productive and successful making businesses manufacturing and um, the congressman they talked about China and how there was aggression economically and that we were in a war with China economically and um, this has been five years and uh, the congressmen have uh, come again and again and sit in, in meetings and hearings um, to hear about these things and even when um, there was um, a uh, very big event that had such an effect on the economy named Corona. Uh, 
this is just um, more pressure and stress that China has put on the United States of America. And everything that was hidden that, um, that ha occurred during that time, um, like the um, director of the Federal Emergency Management Association, this like the disaster relief, uh, you know, um, people in the government, um, they said that we were waiting for protective uh, masks and clothes to come for the hospitals. And we were told that it was on the airplanes, but these were ghost flights. They would show on the radar, but there was really no airplane there. And um, then China started buying up from the entire world market as much as it could of these protective equipment. And then um, there was a manufacturer based in the United States who the government was trying to get contracts from because this American government was trying to start um, emergency, emergency orders. And uh, because of emergency orders from the government, they would take control of businesses during times of war. And they would... Um, you know, so th so they had the the you know according to our you know our rights and our establishments that um, the government should have had the it was a American company manufacturer we should have been able to get those. We were told no. They were told no. These someone else is waiting for these, uh, and it was China, and uh, so. Um, there are ma very many instances of uh, small aggressions. Even the President Joe Biden said that uh, last year when there was a big winter ice storm in Texas, the cold front had pushed down so far that it had come into Texas and it had frozen it, which is a southern climate and was not prepared for ice and uh, cold, and uh, the power grid was shut down. And so um, there was a lot of uh, problems surrounding that. It brought down power to like 10 million people in Texas in the middle of an ice storm, half the state, like 15 million, half the state, and kept power uh, down for a period of time. And there was disruptions of getting gas and uh, there was these things that would occur that um, were seemingly um, not connected and the president blamed China or not China Russia so Russia <clears throat> Russia um, a huge uh, interaction of, well, between the United States and Russia is uh, concerning Syria probably the most aggressive area or, or theater of, of America and uh, uh, Russia in uh, confrontation. And um, America has in every way positioned itself to be separated in its uh, uh, pursuits from those that Russia pursues. And because there are two different uh, things um, competing for the same resources it stays in a war and this is the same true when the um, uh, the leader refuses to step down when a huge number of people ask him to well why can't we just have someone else who then you have so many millions of people who don't agree with this just get someone else because then you can at least these people will be willing to try again um, so, um, the United States has talked about Russia in its Congress and with its politicians, um, in, uh, in, uh, they've talked about Russia in terms of, of all of these, um, uh, disregard of, of other people and, um, aggression and, uh, killing and uh, oppression and uh, this has been a number of years now when 
things happen in the world and uh, the United States is uh, deciding um, you know uh, what options they have um, talking about Russia and Vladimir Putin it's very often um, in terms that he is evil and crazy and that's a strong thing to say about any person and especially when you are in a hearing of the government and representation in Congress and you say these words about other leaders it's very strong meanings in those and the choice of words that they use are strong meaning words um, <clears throat> I think that the United States has uh, suffered from China and Russia for a long time and taken losses and was afraid of creating even more instability and even more imbalance and not being able to control the situation if it gets very escalated and uh, the Chinese and Russians are going to do what they've always done and what they mean to do which is what they've been doing and uh, um, so um, there is uh, the uh, pretext of war that uh, certain alliances should not be made between Ukraine and other persons. But really, this is meaningless. It's meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. What does that mean? Why do you care? It's, it's really about... Um, The wealth of the nations are um, the prize. The wealth of the nations are the prize. And uh, the, the, that, that could only be the, the purpose and reasons for all of this. And um, so I think that um, all of the talk, it's um, not important. Um, this is a long time coming, and uh, um, you can understand what's going to happen in the future, if maybe, because you know that um, certain things, they come together, and they make certain results, and um, that's the wonderful, beautiful thing about life. It's like chemistry, and uh, that's... Uh, I would have to say the 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 all of the the people of this world and everything that we have done it's like chemistry it's like our bodies it's like biology biology is chemistry and it's like life and uh every soul in Ukraine every soul in America and every soul everywhere um this is all the result of all of our little souls and uh, there is um, some um, very black things happening in some places that are not happening in other places. And that is not fair. It's not justice and it's not balanced. But the world and chemistry, it needs to balance. It needs that. And uh, it will it will balance. It has to. And that's what's going to happen, just like it always did. And although it's n very dark now, and it's not very clear to see that meaning, the meaning of that, that all of, all of everything is, all of our little souls are coming to bear now of everything, I will tell this important story. Um, two weeks ago, um, I talked with my mother 
and she told me um, I asked her about my family history, which I knew my great grandfather Leo Berkman was uh, a uh, a soldier in Hitler's German army, and he was uh, sent uh, by a uh, to North Africa to Libya in 1942 as part of the German army and my great grandfather my mother is German my mother was born and raised in Nuremberg Germany and she immigrated to the United States when she was 18 years old to New York City so she did marry an American her father's father is Leo Berkman he was a painter he painted beautiful oil paintings and um, when he was drafted into the German army and sent to Libya to fight, he did acquire some uh, paints, and uh, he painted a portrait of his commander. And one day his commander said to him, We have a big battle coming, and I fear we will not live. I ask, I will give you orders because I am the commander. I will give you orders to send you back across the ocean white, the Mediterranean Sea, to France and to Germany home. As my last wish, give this portrait you made to my wife. My grandfather in 1942 or three came across the Mediterranean Sea during World War II and it was a very dangerous on that sea at that time. And World War II was a time when a new technology came, the airplane. So my grandfather, he came across, my great-grandfather came across and w came back to Germany and delivered the portrait. He learned that his commander and all of his unit had died in the battle. And he, my grandfather, great grandfather was redeployed to the front lines of France, and he um, uh, he there uh, was an instructor for uh, tanks. He was teaching the uh, other men uh, how to uh, drive tanks, and then uh, so he was he was near the front lines, but not all the way forward, and then had some protection. When the Americans came into France, they captured my great-grandfather, and he was kept as a prisoner of war for two years in an American in prison, uh, uh, camp. Again, my grandfather acquired paints, and he, um, after two years in imprisonment, he used some of the paint, and he painted on his chest and then he <coughs> pretended he was sick. And at that time, there was a great fear of the contagious pulmonary lung disease. Um, and uh, they, th they did an x-ray uh, and, and, and checked him. And they thought, oh, he must have this disease. Get him out of here and send him home. And he was sent home to Germany to die. But he was not really sick. And he came home to his wife. And my grandfather, his son, who was five years old. And this story, um, my grandfather, he did not pass down this story to my mother. Um, instead, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, he had died. When he died, my mother wrote to her, great, her grandmother and asked her, please, what did... Leo tell you about the war I, I would like to learn the history and write it so then my great grandmother started writing my mother in German uh, uh, all of the story that she could remember and telling her and now my mother has compiled a book and uh, for an honor and memory of my great grandfather Leo Bergman who served in uh, the uh, Hitler's German army and who in World War II and who was able to come safely home, thank God.